man, are we getting some feedback? Uh, not just on the floods and on the free speech issue up in Kaipara, but also this amazing media pile on, like a bunch of teenagers on Twitter, on Wayne Brown. Uh, before the rains even stop falling, it's all his fault. You know what? The same people who are piling on Wayne Brown are probably de- dreadfully disappointed that Jacinda Ardern couldn't have just parted the waters by walking down the motorway or indeed walked on the water because that's what they're heading for, um, the martyrdom of, of Jacinda Ardern. But, look, how do things uh, unfold in an emergency? Who's really running stuff? And, and as a mayor in modern New Zealand, the boss of everything, um, does he have to be the most wonderful media performer in the world? And, and what's this guy Brown like? Well, I, I thought for a non-woke, liberal, pearl-clutching journalist view on this, it might be good to talk to someone who's actually on the council and has had some experience of governance and leadership and decision-making at a high level. And uh, who better to do that uh, than friend of the platform and Auckland councillor and former National Party Cabinet Minister, Morris Williamson. Morris, welcome to the platform. Nice to have you with us. Good morning, Sean. All right, firstly, how's your place? Wet? Oh, no, um, we are very wet. Everything's wet in Auckland, but we're in a particular part of the geography that's sort of a very gentle slope down towards uh, the ocean and... Uh, the sea level would have to rise about 40 feet for us to have any flooding here. So this part of Pakaranga on the sort of P- P- Pakaranga Peninsula here is very safe and so on. It's it's West Auckland, it's South Auckland and it's North Shore that have been really hit badly. Yeah. Um, uh, honest assessment, what did you think of Council's reaction to, to the remarkable events as they unfolded on Friday? Oh, I think there's a whole lot of things that could have and should have been done better. Anybody that claims it was a, a perfect uh, score for everybody would have to be dreaming. But let's put it in context. This was an extreme event. Actually, this was a mega extreme. Uh, even as the rain was starting to fall, everyone thought it would be quite heavy. They thought it would be really heavy, that it was going to be amazing. By the time it was just torrential and bucketing, then things started to move quite quickly. Now, remember, this is not like an earthquake which hits at one specific point in time yep. and everything kicks in. This was over a period of hours, how much rain is falling, and it was falling uh, in different locations. And, you know, as I said, out here in East, it was raining, but it was nothing. We didn't have any flooding in the roads. You could drive around okay. There were patches in Auckland where it was underwater. So I think the emergency management uh, centre is the role uh, to, to take those decisions and to get acting straight away. Uh, I think keeping the mayor informed was important. I think the communications from everybody, uh, when New Zealand Transport Agency, I don't like to call them their other name because I can't even remember it, but when the New Zealand Transport Agency closed up shop at 7 o'clock and said, oh, we were off for the night, and it took the Minister of Transport to you know, kick some butt and get them back on air about 9.30, when we're in the most extreme then you have to say, why have we got so many comms people working there at such an inflated budget? Um, okay, that's a really big yeah, question. Good I mean, point. most people should good have, but people should have had the, Yeah, they got they about the 200 entire, or 250 comms yeah, people, yeah. It's, it's a huge number, and yet they went off air at 7.30 when we were facing this extreme explosion from the heavens. Uh, the, the next thing was that, uh, you know, trying to get a hold on exactly what's going on where takes time. Yeah. And in the end, I, I think, look, there's going to have to be a review. And I think if anybody says, oh, there's nothing much to learn here, they'd be wrong. There's a lot to learn. Uh, Mayor Brown has got a number of really good skills. One of them is he's not a great media performer. But I'm not sure that's important. It doesn't need, you know, we're not looking for a performing seal here. The fact is that even with regards to the state of emergency declaration he made, all of the work was underway well before that was needed to be signed. It was a formal declaration, which means police can uh, uh, make you evacuate from your house mandatorily and yeah. not just ask, etc. What I understand as of last night, I checked, they still haven't needed to uh, implement any of those uh, okay. powers. So the, the signing of the declaration made very little difference to anything. Okay, the did that affect the fact, around? a lot of people said, I didn't get a warning on my phone, a civil defence warning or something. Was that Wayne Brown's oh, 
No, of course it's not. Wayne Brown would not even know that emergency management have not done that or should have done. There is a. I, I think that's one of the serious questions that will be raised in the washout. But look, those things should come, and it's a little bit like the Christchurch earthquake in the management. There will be a time when we need to go back and say, what went wrong? How did it go wrong? Whose butt needs kicking? Uh, or who's accountable? But there should have been, in my view, a... Uh, a text go out on the network because they've got all the systems to do but it. But that and is not it. Wayne Brown's shortcoming. That's no, not his not a, fault. Not at all. Not, a, not at all. Wayne Brown's role was to say to them, what is it you need from us? Because emergency mm. management have unbelievable powers when there's an emergency yeah. on. Uh, national emergency, we're offering support and help well, well before the state of emergency was declared. So that means that we were getting everything we required and then Brown signing that meant the police had the powers to make you evacuate buildings and so on. Yeah. Um, Morris, what about... And I... Look, uh, I'm just trying to remember how, how to order this interview. Look, I was just amazed as I went online on, on Friday night, Saturday morning, to find out what had happened in Auckland. The proportion of the coverage in mainstream media... And the proportion of the stuff on Twitter that was just, to be frank, bitching about Wayne Brown. Well, well there was always going to be people that would take that opportunity. They, uh, we've only had a, an election here a few months ago. Uh, he won and the other side lost. And a huge number of people from that side don't like the fact that he won and they lost. And there are a number of people who are waiting for the opportunity to, you know, attack him when anything happens, you know, even the raid itself was probably his fault in some people's view. The, the fact is that the, the real issue should have been what is needed by people in terms of accommodation, food, transport, emergency management, safety and so on. And all of the focus from the news media and all of the focus from emergency management should be on that. Yes, you can come back in a few days' time and have a bitch about yeah, it. Yeah, but, but, but they were people off weren't waiting. I, I mean... No, uh, they I were some pimply-faced reporter as producer for some low-rating talk <laughs> show saying, I've opened up my house, unlike Wayne Brown. I felt like asking him if he'd asked his parents for their permission uh, for the sleepover. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, uh, Simon Wilson spends his Saturday after his city gets flooded out bitching about Wayne Brown. It is remarkable. Yeah, but, but Simon Wilson has a very, very specific view about things in pol local politics politics he um for example my co-counselor out here sharon stewart he writes ghastly things about her all the time scores are at about a one or a two and yet she is top of the poll out here every election so i want to know do you think that the vast bulk of the voters have got a better view of what's going on or simon wilson's got a better view um I, I would be very angry if he ever wrote anything nice about me. I'd almost want to sue because yeah. his view his view, and my public's view are 180 degrees opposed yeah. to each other. Yeah. I mean, what, what help does that have with him sitting there? And he was bitching about Wayne Brown during the campaign and he's bitched about him ever since. So you, that was unexpected. That was totally expected, sorry, that he would be taking yeah. that mode. Morris, it, do you know something else that I believe? The rest of the country outside Auckland looks at you guys and thinks you're a bunch of... W A N K E R S S for carrying on like this. Yeah, well, I think the thing that people outside of Auckland need to understand is how big this place is. Just my ward, where I'm the councillor, just the Howick ward is bigger than Hamilton, is yeah. bigger than Dunedin, yeah. is bigger than Palmerston North. So it's not like a little ward that people have. In most local bodies, you know, if you're a member of the Waitomo District Council, your ward's probably got, I don't know, seven or 12,000 people or something. My ward alone has got 130,000 people in it. Uh, and so that's how big Auckland is. And when something happens here, it's 37% of New Zealand's GDP. So it's nearly a, a country in terms of its magnitude and size. And yeah. therefore, you've got to magnify everything that happens anywhere else in New Zealand. You've got to magnify it up multiple number of times because this is a huge population and a huge part of the economy and a huge piece of the real estate base. Yeah. Uh, Morris, do you think it is going to be worthwhile looking at infrastructure? I've heard something about a dam at Tauranga Inlet or somewhere. Is it worth going back after the dust settled a little bit, the water's come down, things have dried out, and saying, did our stormwater work? Was there, is there anything we can improve? And rather than build a cycleway, 
improve our wastewater or our stormwater infrastructure? Yeah, yeah of course we, we have to do that. But one here's one problem, and I, I had this when I was Minister of Building and Construction with regards to earthquake-prone building standards. You can build buildings to a particular standard or you can build to the gold-plated standard or the platinum or, or even above, but there is no standard you can ever go to that will withstand the killer earthquake like a, a 10. It will just wipe out every, it'll re, even the beehive can't withstand a 10. Yeah. So now you've got to say, what is the most realistic thing? Do you want to make our building code so expensive that an ordinary house costs five million to comply with all of the standard and then the one in ten million year thing doesn't occur for five thousand years or whatever or do you want to be more realistic and go with probabilities what's the likelihood now why i'm giving you that example for the extreme earthquake is what happened in auckland on friday night was the heaviest ever deluge of rain experienced in new zealand ever the records show that it was more than anything. And in fact, it wasn't just fractionally more. It was way beyond that. So no wonder infrastructure like stormwater pipings and, and drains and manholes and, and so on didn't cope well. But if you want to go back and build infrastructure that will cope with that one in, you know, I don't know, one in a thousand years or something, because we've never had this before and we never liked it. Oh, we're going to have more of it because of climate change, though, and because you have milk. Oh, <laughs> the, the sooner we stop the, the stop the lunacy on all of that stuff. Look, the, 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 I'm a Sean. I'm a huge fan of climate change. I'm a massive fan of it because I've looked at history and the climate has always changed on this planet. We've been through six ice ages when human beings weren't here. There were times when the south of England was into the high 40 degrees during the Battle of Hastings and, and massive temperatures uh, and so on. There were times when the Thames River in London was frozen solid. So climate change always has been here and we'll go through cycles of it. What we can't do is just go, you know, throw the whole baby out with the bathwater and be lunatics about what needs to happen. Yeah, there are lessons to be learned. Yes, there's some infrastructure that's failed. Yes, is there something that will need a lot of money to bring it up to a standard that that may never be needed again. Re remember that building act that I talked about. If we build our houses to a point where we would never have damage from an earthquake, no one could afford to buy one. Yeah, yeah, I get you. Morris, have you spoken to Wayne? Um, yes, I have. Yes, I have. Can I ask you how he's feeling or doing? I didn't bother asking yeah. for an interview this morning because I thought the answer would be different. No, um, Wayne's a pretty stoic character. He's a you know, salt of the earth, sort of tough guy, and uh, he's just getting on with what's needed. And he knows that he is not the good guy at certain things. Like, Wayne's not the polished uh, TV performer. Everyone refers to Bob Parker in Christchurch yeah. after the earthquake. Bob had been a TV presenter, and his skills were in presentational stuff on television and so on, and yeah. did a phenomenally good job. Did a, you you got to give him credit. Did a phenomenally yeah. good job. Well, Wayne's doing some other stuff. He's an engineer. That's going to be hellishly valuable for us to have somebody who's got really good engineering and he's, he's a builder, he's built properties and so on. To have that experience is fine. So, look, the people that are managing the, the emergency are the emergency management system with structures and teams. Fire and, and uh, emergency New Zealand are involved. Uh, I'm really confident that the people that matter are doing the job. And uh, this idea of let's have a pile on, on Wayne, it's just to do with he's, he just won an election and a lot of them lost it. Yeah. I hear you, and I, I agree with you, actually, Morris. Uh, thank mm. you very much indeed for your, your time this morning. Uh, stay pleasure. dry, stay warm. That is Morris Williamson, Auckland councillor. Uh, and I think he makes a good point. We are so used to thinking that our politicians must be slick, telegenic and everything else. What if they're not? What if they're good at their jobs, um, but they're not good at the PR? Or is that, oh, you want someone who makes you feel comfortable and confident as they lie at you through their teeth? Because uh, that's the truth. Um, I want your calls on this now. 0800 3 Text me. Text me on 5050. And no, it's not climate change. Don't stop drinking milk. It's one in a thousand years. No scientific proof it's climate change apart from Greenpeace and the Green Party and other people losing their stuff over it. 